So welcome, Kristen. Hello. How are you feeling? <laughs> Good, I'm excited. Thank you for having me. My our pleasure, our pleasure. You should be excited. Kristen, um, we're going to start off a little bit, Crystal and I. She's going to ask you some stuff. I'm going to ask you some stuff. Um, I'm just going to introduce a little bit to who I know you to be, my dear friend. She is two years in the business, uh, just, just a little over two years now, right? Yeah, like two years and two months. <laughs> <laughs> got it right. Got it right. Um, and, and she came from a real estate family. So she kind of grew up always watching parents do real estate and, and so forth. So I guess, Chris, uh, Kristen, where I would love you to start off with everybody is to kind of tell them why you decided to enter the real estate field and what your expectations were of how your business was going to be when you started. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I interviewed Kristen along with the owner of Agent Lo Locator, Addo, at our Apex event. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, what Kristen expected, as we all do, uh, wasn't quite what her reality ended up being when she first started in real estate. So why don't you kind of update everybody? Yeah. Um, okay. So like you said, I come from a family of realtors, like literally everyone that I'm related to is in real estate <laughs> in one way or another. Um, so I've been around it honestly, since I was like eight or nine and uh, I worked front desk for my parents' team growing up in high school and university. And I remember being honest, I was like, I don't want to be a real estate agent at all. <laughs> like, people are, <laughs> but um, change of events happened and I got my license and I actually love it. Um, I'm very happy with the way things are going, but for my expectations, um, you know, you watch TV, <laughs> you watch your parents, you've been in it for years. Um, and you know, I'm sure everybody has seen Selling's on set, but here I am, you know, it's COVID, I'm watching the show and I'm like, oh my God, that looks so fun. <laughs> <laughs> like they never expressed it to be that fun before, you know, and glamorous. Yeah. Uh, so I got my license and uh, quickly learned that that was not at all how it goes. Um, so yeah, I, uh, yeah, I didn't think it was uh, going to be that difficult I guess but you know you do have to work <laughs> it's true and the one thing that you mentioned at our realtor day that we had um was you know we all step into this business thinking what all our friends and family are going to use us like now that I'm a realtor you know so-and-so buys houses all the time and uncle so-and-so what was what ended up being your reality yeah so I actually I have a big family um so my dad's side like it's quite big and uh I was just expecting I was like because I'm very like I like to support family members if they have business and whatnot or friends and I was just expecting like okay cool like these people like why wouldn't they want to work with me like you know I'm fine <laughs> um and uh yeah I quickly learned that was not the case um they were like yeah no we're gonna go with this person um who we've used before and instead of you. <laughs> so, right. Oops, thank you. And, and you know what that happens? I mean, we can all agree. If anybody wants to step in in the chat section, it's happened to all of us. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you think people will use you and then they don't use you because you're too close. Yeah. you know, or you're not experienced enough or whatever the reason. So you ended up, you, you became a realtor and you started working on your parents' team because they have a team. Um, so right from the get-go, Kristen, you did start doing the agent locator leads, right? Yeah, I've had it since day one. Right, rates from the get-go. And what our parents did do, full disclosure, was I had already started and opened up uh, my coaching business on the side of my real estate. So we did spend some time together kind of getting you through the ins and outs of Agent Locator. But what did you find your mindset to be at that time in your career and, and your experience with trying to convert these leads? 
Um, I, it was a learning curve. I think when you first start out, you're very excited and I guess a little naive, you know, you think everyone's going to be so excited to pick up the phone and talk to you. <laughs> um, so yeah, like that was my mindset going into it and it quickly, I had to adjust to think like, okay, you know, not everyone in this system is going to be receptive to everything I put out there and just understanding like, that's okay. Everyone has their own timeline. Um, and not coming across with like commission breath. Um, mm -hmm. That was a big thing in the beginning to realize. In your first year, because she used to come in and she used to always come into my office and go, oh, Tara, like da, 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 da. You know, it really, you weren't really finding a lot of success. You were definitely trying to work them. I know you were because I saw you, but it wasn't, there was something missing. Would you agree? in in you and maybe your mindset in regards to the leads because I want to tell everybody what I saw in Kristen her first year and what I've seen in Kristen her second year and just so you know in her first year she still did incredibly well <laughs> Kristen did sell houses but when it came to the leads Kristen did a complete overall self-check of herself. So why don't you kind of explain how that came to fruition and, and what you did internally? Um, yeah. So like I said, mindset, I think plays a huge role when you're looking at your leads um, and just coming, like, you got to understand that you're, you're there to help them. You're not there to sell them anything. Um, and I find just picking up the phone and calling them and saying like, how can I help you? Like not every situation for real estate is the same. Like people could be going through divorce. It could be an estate sale. So you don't always want to be like this, like super cheery person on the phone and like, you know, try and sell them something and be pushy. You kind of just need to be like, hey, like I'm here if you need anything. Um, like, all I'm here is to help you. And whatever that case may be to talk to you on the phone about your situation, you may already have a realtor, but also, you know, if you're just emotionally, sometimes people like will spill a lot on the phone. Yeah. So yeah, I think my mindset just switched to being like, okay, you need to come from a place of contribution and how can I help these people? Right. And just understanding like their time, they don't owe you anything. Um, yes, they've registered on your website, but their time is their time and they'll move when they're ready to move and not when you need them to move. Yeah. Right, right. And we talk about that a lot, don't you, Crystal, about oh, how absolutely. sometimes I think, no, not sometimes, that's a lie. All the time, I feel like um, that it's really easy for agents to expect uh, mm -hmm. success or whatever. I don't even like using the word success. Deals to happen right away because they need them to yeah. happen right away. And, and that's it, where the mindset it, gets. Yeah. A lot of people look for that instant gratification. Yeah. And, and, or, you know, even just seeing today watching, um, I guess someone wanted to put their, their leads on, on pause. And then their comment was no one is interested. I said, well, you've got all these leads. And then that also begs the question is like, what is being like, how are we communicating with our leads that they're coming back saying they're not interested? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that makes you think that we're either trying to sell them into something they're not ready for. Um, or they're in that, that mindset of looking for those quick transactions rather than saying, okay, these people are interested to some degree. It's just a matter of when they plan on moving forward. And it might not be within the next few months. It might be within the next few years. But again, you, like, as you always say, we're building a database here and, you know, the lights start turning green at all different spots is when people start to turn around and start getting motivated to actually commit to a move. Right. Yeah. And I mean, my experience, and I say this every time we do these webinars, usually every other week, I'm usually talking about another agent locator lead that's now in my car. Um, mm -hmm. I just did a market analysis a week ago uh, for a lead that actually first came on, like Kristen, in 2019. Mm -hmm. So, you know, was she interested then if we're going to use that word? I mean, clearly, no. But the bottom line is, I didn't delete her. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? yeah. and, and that's where I really want to focus as we're going forward for the rest of the year. And I know, Kristen, because I spent so much time with you 
in the real estate field in the last two years. I work with you. I know the mindset that you did, that change, and you were always driven. I don't want anybody to think that she didn't show up and she didn't try because Kristen was there. She was at the office every day, I want to say. I don't know many days that I didn't see Kristen come in and work. But things were still, she was selling, but when it came to the leads, they weren't just coming together. And that's where I know she did this big self-check where she didn't go, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kristen, you didn't blame the leads. You didn't say the leads aren't any good. Yeah, no. You said- They're all, all you, good. They're all what really am good. I doing? Am I right? And maybe you can talk about that process with everybody. Yeah. Um, so I, I like to think of the quote, if they buy the link, they'll buy the chain. Um, so them registering is they're buying that little link, um, but it's up to you if they're going to continue and buy the chain unless you break it. So um, that mindset for me has really helped because I'm like, okay, all these people are warm. Like they came on here for a reason. They're interested in real estate clearly. Um, obviously you're going to get those one-offs, but like, don't worry about those. <laughs> um, but the majority of them are really good and they're warm. So it's more up to you to be like, okay, what systems can I put in place to stay on top of these leads? How like each lead is different. Some of them will like, if you call them, some will, won't, some will prefer to text and you'll kind of get to know that as you move through, um, your systems. And then it's just like putting your notes in and keeping on top of them and, stuff like that to keep them excited and keep them looking at your name, I guess. Right. So what is, let's just talk about your systems, because I know that you have uh, at least three pillars of your business. And I know that leads are one of those pillars. So why don't you share with everybody what you do to work your leads as the pillar of your business? Uh, yeah. So whenever we get a lead that comes in, we like to call them. Um, just as an introductory call, like this is a real person here. It's not a computer. Um, so like, let me know if you have any questions, like we're just here to help and nothing pushy unless they, you know, guide the conversation in that way, then you can adjust your uh, script, I guess. Um, but we have our drip campaigns that Tara has worked with us and set up through her program. And honestly, the response from that is incredible. Um, I wasn't really getting any response before that. Um, so it's nice to have something like that where you don't really have to worry about it, like setting it up because it's already done for you. Um, you're just applying it to them and then it gets sent out and they feel like you're writing these emails to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's nice, it's easy. And uh, yeah, and then I just kind of, you know, if people are active, you reach out to them, send them an email, text, give them a phone call. Um, and they kind of get to know who you are because your name is in their inbox every day. So, right. So why don't you share with Crystal and our audience the kind of results that you've had? Um, just, just to make you guys aware in the last year, uh, and remember, uh, only two years in the business, only two years. Uh, she has multiple times been on our top 10 in our brokerage. And, and when I say that, we're at over 165 realtors. So she's having success. So why don't we talk a little bit about how you, you have been able to turn around these leads? Yeah, um, I've had, I guess, a lot of success from agent locator leads, um, whether that was like transactions that closed. Um, I take anything that happens that's positive as a success through agent locator, like any home evaluation, listing appointment, showing, like those are all wins for me because whether they're not ready, I had one person that we essentially listed her house, not on the market, but uh, the paperwork was done and she just had a, an issue with her bank or whatever, like she needed to renew her mortgage and it's a whole thing, but like, she's not ready right now, but she will be in a year or two years. And hopefully if I like, don't break the chain, I'll stay on her and, you know, she'll use me again for it. 
Um, so I like to look at every little positive thing as a win. Um, and I spoke to a lead last week, I think it was, and I actually had never spoken to her on the phone. It was just through emails and she was like, oh, hi. She's like, I love the listings that you send me every morning. I get up, I have my tea and I get my iPad out and look at your listings. And I was like, oh my God, like I've been a part of this lady's life for, I don't know how long. And like, I have no idea who she is, but like, she knows who I am. And so it's like, it's really cool to like, see that. Um, because they get to know you, I guess, without you really doing much, like you're, mm -hmm. it automatically sets them up to get those listings, right? Um, and I've been showing this one uh, lady uh, some houses this week. So it's, there's a lot of success in there for sure. There is, you know, I love that you say that because that's something that I have spoken a lot about, uh, Crystal, and I know that you have is is sometimes because we're so focused on getting response quicker and doing the deal quicker that we forget that when our name is in their inbox through a drip campaign and through the listings that they already feel that we're their realtor mm -hmm. and we don't even know right? So, so this response that Kristen had with this one lead in particular is a response that I've had multiple times where they're actually like, oh my God, Tara, like I've known them for 30 years, but they already have created that bond. Mm -hmm. We just don't know yet. Yeah. The power of your name constantly in an email is just as important as you making a call and you showing them a house. And that's where I wish that everybody would now really value these Google leads and not blame the lead. Oh, the lead's wasting my time or this or that because the power is so much more than you ever can imagine. Anything that you can add, Crystal, as well? Well, um, just out of curiosity with your leads and as you're, you know, you're finding success and people are, are um, responding to your emails in, in a positive manner, what does your daily routine look like or weekly routine when it comes to these leads? Like, how are you situating yourself in your dashboard to, you know, in addition, of course, to campaigns are automatic to help keep yourself top of mind and keep those connections going? Uh, yeah, so I like the how on the dashboard you can see who is um, last active. Um, so if I'm going in there daily to look at them, I like to start with that because those are the people who are either active all the time or newly became active. So real estate's on their mind. So I like to start mm -hmm. with that um, and call as you know as many people as I can. I don't spend hours on days like calling people. Um, but you know, if you call like a couple of pages of people, I think it's a good start for a day-to-day -day routine. Um, so that's what I like to do. And then if they don't answer the phone, I'll either leave a message or send them a quick text, uh, or email if there are no phone numbers not working. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's how I start. And then I kind of just go through if I, I have like a, a, a check, like not a checkboard, like a board in front of me. I'm very visual. So mm -hmm. I have like all my sticky notes of, who's uh, like in my car, who says they're planning to buy in the next year or whatever. And I'll go in and see, you know, are there emails being sent to them? Are they active? Are they opening? Are they clicking on things? Um, if they're not, I'll reach out to them. If they are, I'll just keep note of it and kind of mm -hmm. keep an eye on them. Perfect. That's good. Well, I think you, was it you, Tara, that mentioned the whole visual thing before? So I know someone where they, it's like, if it's in front of you, it's when you have those people that you've connected with or spoke to that are more on the, the hot list, yeah. that you're, they're more on your radar is to have them somewhere. So you're constantly looking at those names. So they're staying top of mind um, and, and you're, you're making sure you're not going to drop the ball or, you know, cut the and chain. You know as, what? As I love the visual too, that I've always worked that way because I have always had a large number of leads that are either in the car with me or are right on the cusp. So when I put them on my whiteboard, I also know when I see their names that when I'm on the hot list and the live new listings that are coming up every day on the MLS, all I have to do is look up and see, oh, Mary's looking for this. 
And then I can see if something came up today, which is even mm -hmm. you know quicker than maybe what they would get from the automatic emails. Yeah. So for me, I think that's a no brainer. Not everybody works that way, but mm -hmm. Kristen does. She's very visual and it shows. Now, as you start communicating with your leads and, and what I really want to commend you on, Kristen, is you're open to communication with them on all levels. So Kristen is making the calls. Kristen is also texting and she is also watching their email notifications and, and hitting them with an email or something when she sees them relatively active. Now, as you're combining all of these communication levels, I guess we could say, um, are you finding that it's actually helping you communicate with everybody in the industry because you're learning so much about how you talk to somebody when they're this way or when they're maybe a little shyer? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's good to be able to adapt to all different communication types. Um, some people, I guess, like if they're working during the day, they can't pick up the phone, but they have their cell phone there. They can shoot you a quick text back or an email is good. Um, or if they're, you know, like an older person who doesn't have a cell phone, but they have a home phone and like they prefer to call, like you got to look at who it is based on like their generation when they're born and you can kind of gauge whether you know, which way to go, but uh, it, yeah, it's pretty easy to tell. And I think if you just like get rid of the fear from either sending emails or texts or calling, like just, just do it. <laughs> it is, it's true. Um, I also notice uh, with you is I know that as you've grown your business, you actually are really focused on your why as well. Does that help you maintain your mindset and your drive to work your pillars of your business? Yeah, I was actually thinking about that yesterday. Um, you know, if you don't have a why, I feel like there's no, you're like, all right, well, what am I, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, right. uh, so it's definitely important for me to have that. And again, have it visually in front of me with a vision board or whatever it is. Um, just so you're constantly again looking at it it's in your face and it's like okay this is why I'm doing what I'm doing this is why I'm working this is why I'm calling that lead if you're you know wake up and you're like I do not want to do that <laughs> today like I don't want to pick up the phone but it's like okay why am I doing this and then it definitely helps my mindset to get in there and do it do you do that if you're having a an off day and we talked about this last time Crystal mm -hmm. uh and, and I will tell you what Katya's answer was after you answer. Uh, you wake up in the morning and you know what I mean? It's just one of those days. Would you still make the calls? Yeah, I think if you set out to do something, like you just have to do it. I always like to say to people, like sometimes you have to be like an actor um, you know, actors when they go on set, even if they're having a bad day, they still go out and perform. So like you gotta kind of do like who am I gonna be today? And then you're just like I'm at work, everything's shut off. Like just do what you have to do. Right, and that's exactly what our other two, yeah. uh, Priscilla and yeah. Katia, said. They were like, nope. If I am so driven, if I'm supposed to make ten Good calls, call. I make the ten calls. And I think that that's a really thing to commend you with, mm -hmm. because a lot of people would say. I'm going to come across sounding exactly how I feel. Um, so to be able to do that, bravo, bravo. And yeah, and I think, and for some people, they will though, right? You could tell like <laughs> some people can, are able to do a self-check and be like, I, I don't feel like I'm my best self right now to be doing this. And, or, you know, as, as many people say, our energies transmit through, right? So if we're able to, a lot of us are great at putting different hats on. I'm at work now, everything that's going on beside me in my life, that's just out the window. This is work Crystal or work Kristen or work Tara. Um, yeah. It's funny how we almost like flip a switch and we're a different personality. It, yeah. I, I don't know if it's more of a woman thing. <laughs> it's just like, Baby. here we are, this is me. Um, right. And yeah, but I know some, if you're feeling down and out or what have you, or other people just get things. So Nick suggests like, Turn on some motivational videos, watch a few motivational clips, 
that gets you going or pump up the music to just get yourself out of if you're in a little funk uh, where you're just feeling sluggish or not motivated to do what you know you should be doing is to, you know, help yourself switch that around rather than just expecting it to happen. Right. And just to add on that, um, I, you know, like everyone's human, I wouldn't say that every time I'm feeling, you know, down or whatever that I would still call. Um, and I think that's important just to give yourself grace and be like, okay, if I don't want to make a call today for whatever reason, the awesome thing about agent locator is you can sit in front of your TV. If you feel like just watching TV all day and you can send blast emails out to people, you can send them yeah. text messages and like, that's better than doing nothing. So yeah, if you're, yeah absolutely. You, know, if you can't get in that mindset. Like you can still do it without, you know, having to pick up the phone and talk yeah. to them. Yeah. yeah. Now, Kristen, you, uh, you decided, I'm trying to think when this was, and I'm going to say it was in the spring to start incorporating some Zoom Q and A's with your leads. You opened it up. I think it was the mortgage one, right? Yes. Okay. So tell us a little bit about why you decided to kind of go that route to add another touch to your leads and maybe just explain to everybody kind of how you set it up. Uh, yeah, so we just did like our team decided to do a first time home buyers event. Um, and, you know, we set it up on Eventbrite uh, and created a Zoom link. We got with someone, you know, a preferred vendor. And uh, we just started blasting it through Agent Locator um, with the mass email. And mm-hmm. we had like, I don't even know how many people from Agent Locator signed up for it. Like it was, I was like pleasantly surprised because, you know, sometimes people don't, they won't sign up. but. <laughs> Yeah, you never know. And I was like, this is one of our first times trying it out. And we were like, wow, like the response from this was so amazing. Like, definitely have to keep doing this. Um, And for us, like looking at it, um, these people, you know, they see your name, they, if they pick up the phone, they talk to you, but there's nothing like that face to face communication, or, Mm -hmm. you know, for them to see your face, I guess, you know, I can't see, but uh, it's, it's nice for them to kind of understand like who you are, get to feel like your personality to see like, would this person be a good fit for me, you know, um, and just educate them, you know, again, like we're here to help them through anything. So if we're providing educational things for them, sending them home buyer guides, um, updating them on the market, like those are all purposeful things that you can do for these people. And I think they appreciate it. And so did you find, I thought it was interesting that you started with the first time buyers kind of thing. Um, did, did you find that there was, I know you had great success at it. There was definitely a demand for people to get to know, get more information, right? Yeah, I think um, like a lot of people out there haven't bought a home yet, or if they have, it was years ago and they're redoing it all over again. And um they kind of just need that support, whether, you know, they could know like how to like the process of it, but if you haven't done it in 10 years, 15, 20, you're not doing it every day. Like we are. So, you know, there's a lot people forget. So I think people like appreciated that. Um, so they can go on there kind of anonymously, not for us, but we know, Mm -hmm. uh, and just like learn about it. Right. Right. Is there any more plans going forward to do another live zoom? Yeah, I think we'll probably do another first time home buyer event. Um, probably in the fall. I think spring and fall are good times to do it. Um, but I would love to continue with just like others, like home inspectors, um, like staging, like does staging help sell? Like what do we do? Like what's the process of that? And just like educate them because it's also a good way to for them to understand. It, I guess you could think of it as like a listing appointment, but not really. Like if someone's considering selling, like if you're providing all these things and you're talking about like how you do that for your clients, like they kind of slowly get to know you and what you do. Um, and I think it would help their decision if they've, you know, if they're on your site, they're probably on someone else's. But if that person's not talking about what they do or providing education for them, like I don't see why they would go over there. So, so true. And that's what we have talked about for such a long time, Crystal, is, you know, the email drips and the listings. I'm telling you that that those are the most important thing, along with also introducing your voice to them, making mm-hmm. a call. Yeah. Um, but because there's so many realtors out there and because there's so many leads 
uh, when you bring in those extra little touches. And right now, with the explosion of social media and the explosion of these videos, the video seems to be a really good way to capture people. So I really commend you when we first started talking about, okay, why don't we try incorporating a Q&A session with our leads and just invite them. Listen, at the end of the day, what did we say, Kristen? If no one shows up, we've lost nothing. Yeah. But yet we still have gained them receiving an invitation for a free Q&A, <laughs> right? Like to me, that's a win. Yeah. yeah and honest, like I said, like fake it till you make it. If no one shows up, they don't know that no one showed up. Send another email out like, wow, what a great success. Thanks everybody. Yeah. You know, and they're like, oh damn, I yeah. should have went there. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> I'm anxious to hear about the other ones that you do. Um, maybe Crystal, shall we yeah. open it up to our uh our viewers, our attendees? Yeah. If anybody yeah. wants to ask anything. Any any new things coming up with Agent Locator, uh, you know, from our um, end to educate? Well, to educate, well, we do have the first time buyers campaign. I think we talked about that last time. We? Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you guys don't have it, anyone new, it's going to be automatically in your system, um, meaning like we, we got your account set up within the last handful of days. Um, it's going to be automatic. All your new leads that come in that are come, filling out the questionnaire first time and marking their first time buyer, um, they're going to be put on that drip. It is 99% emails, educational emails, uh, with four text messages that are just like, hey, just sent you an email the other day about da, 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 da. Did, you, did you receive it? Okay. So just kind of like a little follow up that way. Um, if you guys want it, you don't have it in your system, just email support. They can get it in there for you. Um, and then on the other side of things, any changes or adjustments, there's not really, uh, we do have a no new, another coaching session with uh, Paul Atkinson. He is uh, an agent from, I believe he's from the US. Um, so it's nice to have a lot of different individuals because we all run and, and you guys all run your businesses slightly different. So no one's doing yeah. the exact identical thing or has a different approach. Um, and your approach may not work for, for me, but somebody else's does. It's the same goal is accomplished with it. So, um, those will be on the agent locator, um, training calendar. Okay. So I'll put it in the chat. I'll put the training.agentlocator.ca. Um, in the chat, but that's where you find all the resources, tools, live web register for these webinars, things like that. Um, updated changes. Uh, we're still working on a multi feed, which means that for those of you that are members of multiple boards, if we have those boards, we'll be able to integrate them all into your platform. So, which will help for you know people that work that would in be the Golden fair. Horseshoe. <laughs> right, so that work all over, work up can. north as well, yes. right? So you can just have listings basically all over. Um, the unsubscribe is getting worked on as well. Um, okay. So a lot of individuals um, don't want to unsubscribe from everything, right? So they're adjusting it. So they're, it's gonna ask a question, you know, but do you want less frequent email? So maybe they don't wanna unsubscribe, unsubscribe completely. Maybe they only wanna get listing emails once a month. Right, so they're still staying in the system or maybe the, you know, it's all the other emails. Maybe you've got them on all these email drips or just keep mass emailing and are driving people nuts um, with information that they don't feel necessary. Then they're able to stipulate that. So you can then make adjustments on your end. Um, so people won't just automatically get completely unsubscribed. Um, that's good news. And yeah, that's one. And I don't know where that is as far as completion, um, but that is something. Um, and I have like a list of things and it's just based on importance and requests. Um, another one that might be um, interesting to you guys is being able to handpick listings from the listings that were sent to that person. So if I, so if I, if like you say, you sent me an email today with all these listings and you know, like this one, this one, and this one of those listings you feel are in my best interest, what I would like best, you'd be able to handpick those specific that were just sent to me and then shoot them off. So okay. um, that's something that is not yet being worked on, but something that is in the list of things to do. So there's a right. lot. Of, there's a lot. It's all just 
plugging away and keeping you know, up with it's all based on it's keeping up with everything yeah. and it's really based on you like what we think but also what you guys are requesting so right. if we're noticing you know this is a you know this is happening too frequently that this this and this is happening so let's just readjust it or you guys are in the business and you're like hey i would really be cool if i'm able to do this um with the system so that's when we start to look at it because again it's a platform built for you guys not for us okay perfect mm -hmm. you know Kristen, going forward uh why don't you share what some of your goals are with the agent locator leads um what else are you kind of focusing on and and also because i know that you are on the system and you work it every single day what are you noticing with the majority of the leads right now? Are you noticing them in a holding pattern? Are they kind of wanting to get in the car quicker? Um, yeah, yeah, I feel like it's uh, obviously it depends on the time of year and, you know, yeah. we're on a long weekend, but um, I would say for the most part, people are still pretty eager um, and responsive. Um, so, yeah, I think my goal is just to you know, stay committed to the process and stick with it. And, uh, you know, like results will come if you don't put in the work for it, like that will show up in a couple months. Um, yeah. so it's, I think to just, you know, be consistent. I don't really, I know some people talk about time blocking and they're like, I have to do it at this time every day. I'm not really like that. I'm kind of like, okay, if like, I can't do it in the morning because of whatever, like mm -hmm. I will do it. It just depends on the time of day. Right. Um, do it, I think is, it's okay. Do you feel like um, going forward that, you know, having the Google pay-per-click leads is definitely something that is needed in your real estate business? And can you maybe short, share with everybody why you feel that way? Yeah, um, I like, so I guess when you pick your pillars, um, you know, I have like, repeats and referrals that I was pretty strong with last year nice. um but you have to look at your individual goals and do you want to like move forward do you want to go up higher um and you can't really rely on referrals and stuff like that because you never know when that's going to happen um so I love that this is just something that you can consistently do and the business will just consistently come if you stay consistent <laughs> Um, and again, like if you're, if you're doing well with referrals and repeat business, but you want to move up a level, um, integrating like online leads is great to help get those people that you never knew before to, you know, increase your repeat and referral section down the road. And it gives you that back end CRM to use too, yeah. right? So, you know, I like how Crystal at the start said, you know, you're building your database. You know, these are people that, you know, yes, some may get in the car with you right away, but to say that it is so rewarding to have a lead even six years later, finally say to you, hey, I'm ready. Like, I can't explain how wonderful that feeling is because I always look at it from that point of view as going, I never gave up on Sue. I, I never did. I didn't delete her. And, and that is a reward in itself. So this back end CRM does also, Kristen, as you know, and I'm sure you do this, allow you to add other people that you meet. You know, maybe you do an open house. You've got your drip campaigns already built in there. Do you consistently feed that database with, with other leads? Yeah, I would say all of my clients or people that I meet go in there. Um, it's, yeah, it's so good because you can just set them up on like specific criteria to be sent out um, like daily or however many times they want per week. Um, and again, you don't have to worry about missing something because it's just going to send it to them. Um, so I, yeah, I put, I put everyone in there. <laughs> good. I mean, and I, I really, as you know, Crystal, I really recommend that. Um, I look at it like a big filing system and it doesn't matter if I do <laughs> an open house. It doesn't matter if it's the guy at the gas station that I've now found out wants to possibly buy in the future. Like it, 
the back end CRM is is we can send listings, we can put them on the drip. <laughs> you know, you why would I use anything else? Yeah. You know, in our Pathfinder course, and Kristen and and Josh, I think Austin's on here too. They've all done it. You know, we talk about that funnel. And we have to feed the funnel with, with mm -hmm. business and business can't always come just from referrals, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? So when we've got this big funnel, what Kristen has shown in her two years of being in business is she's working all the pillars to bring the business into the funnel and what comes out at the end, they were now getting in the car. Now they're deals, mm -hmm. now they're showings, right? And it's, it's Top of mind really is, is what it is, right? Now, Kristen, do you use your street match, like your nosy neighbor? Um, I haven't done it yet, but I've like asked people if they want it. Um, and I'm trying to get better. Got people on there? Okay. Yeah, so because that alone for anyone on here is a great tool because a lot of your leads when we're asking questions, like you guys currently own your home, you guys renting, if they own their home. You know, it's, it's a great tool to offer them, you know, depending on boards, you can send them sold listings, but they're staying on top of that activity or just seeing when one of the neighbor's houses go up for sale. Um, because that'll also keep a lot of people in. They may not be planning a move right now, but they definitely want to see how their home is appreciating or depreciating depending on market conditions and what's happening. Uh, but again, your name keeps coming across their inbox every time that happens. Or they're driving down the street and see a new sign pop up and they instantly think your name because they know they're, they're going to expect an email from you with the information pertaining to that property. Um, it's also great for those door knockers as well. Right. So if you guys no door knock, You're it's right a great ahead. way. It's a yeah. great way to be able to, you know, keep them in the loop. You're getting their information because obviously you got to send them stuff. Um, but it's a great way to continuously nurture people, um, even if you call them and they already purchased. Like, I'm sure you've had people where you call and they're like, oh, no, we already bought something. We just saw and we're just checking things out, right? People could get a little bit of buyer's remorse, making sure they made the right decision. Um, congratulate those people. You know, that's awesome. You know, I have a great tool. It can set you up so you can watch what the market is now doing in your new neighborhood. Is that something you'd be interested in? Again, it's that database. And you may have not got the, the, you know, the opportunity this time around, but they will move again, right? Yeah. Or they'll refer, or they have a friend that's looking to move into the area. And so they shoot off that listing to a friend and now you've got a lead that's the friend that's trying to get into the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. all different ways that it can work for you. And they start to, um, start to, you know, expect those listing emails. So it's a great tool for those sellers or CMAs, right? So after you go to a CMA, set them up on that so that they're seeing, all the activity. That's actually a really good idea. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we all have it on our site, but when we do, mm -hmm. Kristen, you know, I'm looking at you because I see yeah, it. I'm like, oh, wow. See, this is why I say I learn just as much when I do these. Yeah. Um, I see Derek has a message there. Um, can you yeah. see? Crystal? How long have you been working with Agent Locator? So, uh, I guess both of you, <laughs> Kristen and Tara are two different timelines. So yeah, how long time. have you, yeah, Tara, you've been with us for several years now. I started 20... with Agent Locator in 2016, um, that early 2016. Um, mm -hmm. I had been with other uh, Google pay-per-click lead companies. So I've been converting I would say leads, because at first Google leads weren't a thing for mm -hmm. almost 19 years now, but exclusively with Agent Locator since 2016. And that was when we still had to set them up manually to get listings. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't yeah. automatic. I'm looking at your account. You've had your tag marketing going since 2016. Yeah. And then your, your, your one website. Yeah. And then of course there's other things that you've added on. Oh yeah. Um, I keep, I keep adding years. on. <laughs> <laughs> adding, <laughs> changing, how long, adjusting. How long, you? how long have you been? Uh, two years, two months. <laughs> <laughs> the day she got her license. Yes. Because your, your team was already using the agent locator system. Yeah. 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 Good question. Anybody else have anything they want to share? Anybody else have tidbits that they could actually say is working for, for you guys? 
uh, I don't know if Josh is. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna say, I find like agent locator is that one pillar that you can do from anywhere. Um, I like to travel, so um, agent I can do agent locator from Mexico or from Florida. Like you can take ten minutes in the morning to shoot some emails out or give some calls, but you know, if you're someone who likes to travel or go to your cottage, like you can't door knock and do open houses while you're on vacation. But like agent mm -hmm. locator. You can literally, I've been in Europe and I've been calling people, talking to them at midnight because they're six hours behind me. <laughs> so like, it's awesome because you can, you know, do That's it. Well, really good. And it's good. Yeah. And because you're using the Twilio, because a lot of people, when they're on holiday, you, you can't use your cell phone because then you're going to experience some um, substantial long distance calls, um, you know, and a big bill. Uh, but at least with Twilio, it's all, it's all for the internet, right? So it's the same number. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You're not going to incur any additional costs. It still allows you to, you know, do a little bit, right? It's like, you know, I'm gonna, like you said, I'm going to wake up in the morning, have a coffee, shoot off some emails, do this, do that, and then carry on with my day. Um, and now you guys also have the app for the CRM system as well. So if you are out venturing, da -da -da -da, and then you get a little ping, like someone shoot you a message, you can still be responsive, even yeah. though you're you're not physically in Canada or at your desk or wherever you may be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about doing the leads and having the ability to have our phones. You know, mm -hmm. it, even even when you are away and you want and somebody else is going to look after your business, you can still look after your leads because it's all yeah. <laughs> it's all here. It's, still, right? it's all every, yeah. You know? it's, and then get somebody to fill in for you. Oh, well, yeah. I must it's, say, Kristen, I mean, you you are a breath of fresh air. You need to be congratulated on, you know, you came into the business with a goal, with a purpose. And you also came into the business and then started seeing, um, okay, maybe I need to change A, B, and C. And, and it's not easy for any of us to do a self-check. Um, I think we talk about this a lot. And, and Kristen, I'm sure you've heard me say that. Every December, I you know, sit back and go, okay, what should I, not could I, but what should I have done differently this past year? Because there's always something that we need to change, not could change, not can change, but, sh you know, need to. Right? I, think, I think that's like a life lesson in general. <laughs> it's oh, like you're welcome, everybody. Look at, look, look at yourself. It's so easy. And in difficult situations to point fingers and say what everything else is going and this is why rather than looking in the mirror and saying what could I be doing differently to turn this around yeah right because if we don't change that situation nothing's going to change the people around you can change but if you're still the person and your approach is still the state it's not going to change any pearls of wisdom before we leave that you want to share Kristen with everybody um I would just say like try and get over the fear of it of you know calling I think calling is very powerful they can hear your voice mm -hmm. um, and you know don't break the chain they'll they're on your website they've you they've done the first step now it's up to you to you know get them out um, celebrate the wins and stay motivated stay motivated keep your why in front of you you know, let's talk about that for one second. Thank you. You do a vision board very regularly, don't you? Do you do it yearly or more than once a year? Uh, I would say it's yearly. Yearly. So maybe let everybody know how that has kept your focus. Because a uh, lot of people don't do them in all honesty. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I actually, so I actually started one this year. And I didn't actually finish it, which is unlike me because I've like always done them. And uh, I've no, I feel like I've noticed like the visual side of it. Like it's so nice to be able to look up and just see like, okay, these are my personal goals. These are my work goals. Yeah. These are 10 year goals from now, or these are the places I want to travel. And just like, like motivating quotes that you can look up and repeat to yourself to like psych yourself up and whatever. Um, so it's, I think it's really important to have your why in front of you because it's like, why are you doing it? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. Especially when you're having one of those days and realize, yeah, right, where I know, right? Supposed to close. <laughs> like, stay motivated, stay on top of it. I always yeah. like the quote, it's really funny. Um, uh, motivation is like bathing, they recommend it daily, so it's like mm-hmm. the same thing, like you gotta like <laughs> constantly, you know, right? Yourself. That's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> well, I think that's a great wrap. I don't know about yeah. you, Crystal. We yeah. can't get any better than this. Uh, <laughs> Motivate daily. Motivate daily. You've been awesome. Go. All right. We're well, good. I don't I think so. We don't have any other questions or hands up. But again, if you guys do have anything that you want us to cover on any future uh webinars or even just questions in general. Um that we could ask panelists or, or Tara and myself, then just shoot them over. Um, these are always recorded, just so you guys know they are on Vimeo. Um, you do get an email, whether you attend today or you miss today's session, uh, you guys always get that that email. In the email, a lot of people just disregard it. Um, I, you know, I can relate to that. Um, but in the email itself, it will have the link to the Vimeo channel. So for Tara's, for all the webinars, so whether it's Tara's, Nick's, uh, Beverly's, um, they're all in there. So if you ever missed one or you want to go back and rewatch one because there was something that was discussed in there, you have the ability to do that. So it's they're all in there. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you everybody for coming. It's been another pleasure. We will see you in a couple of weeks. Kristen, yeah. go sell a house, will you? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Bye. Thanks Bye. everyone. See you. Bye.